Welcome to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. Another Memorial Day has come and gone, so I guess it's officially picnic season and almost summer. And in this episode, I have as my special guest, Tony Bracco from Bracco Farms in Warwick, New York. And he's going to tell us about having a victory garden, how to grow your own fruits and vegetables. He's got some really great tips for us. And he's also giving us some free information that I'll have on my blog that you can download about growing your own fruits and vegetables. I also have a recipe for a blueberry cream frost drink. You know, blueberries are one of my favorite summer fruits. And it's just about fresh blueberry time now and I'm also going to give some tips on how to make your backyard beautiful you know we're all spending more time in our backyard it's really a nice place to just sit and enjoy the quiet of nature and if you can and watch the birds if you're lucky enough to have a backyard so we're going to talk about how to beautify your backyard and before i go on i just want to remind you that this month's giveaway is a copy of the basic art of pizza my book the basic art of pizza Pizza, and also a special giveaway. It's kind of a Father's Day giveaway. You know, Father's Day's coming up and Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza of Chicago. You know, that's the Chicago style pizza, but Lou Malnati's pizza is famous all around the world. We're doing a giveaway for a Lou Malnati's deep dish Chicago pizza. It is absolutely delicious. And all you have to do to win either of those giveaways is like and share this episode with somebody that you think will like the episode and like it. And or you can take a picture of my blueberry cream uh, frost drink, create it and take a picture and uh, share it with the hashtag the Maria Liberati show or if you're going to use some of our tips to growing your own fruits and vegetables or beautifying your backyard take a picture take a picture of your backyard share it hashtag it the Maria Liberati show on social media and you'll be entered into a giveaway for again this month's giveaways are a copy of the basic art of pizza and a pizza from Lou Malnati's Deep Dish Chicago Pizza. And you can find the basic art of pizza. You can find that on my website at marialiberati.com or anywhere books are sold. And you can also find all of my books from the book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Holidays and Special Occasions, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking, Da Vinci Style, The Basic Art of Cocktails, The Basic Art of Pasta, The Basic Art of Experiencing Venice, The Basic Art of Christmas Dinner. You can find those all on my website at marialiberati.com, on the publisher's website at artoflivingprimamedia.com, and anywhere books are sold online. So one of my favorite things to read, especially in the summertime, before I make my blueberry cream frost, is a poem by Robert Frost called Blueberries. But here's my blueberry cream frost drink. And again, this this is from the giveaway book um, from last month that was The Basic Art of Coffee. And that book you can find on my website. A blueberry cream frost. You need a teaspoon of cinnamon, a tablespoon of honey, six shots of espresso coffee, a half a cup of whipped cream or a non-dairy cream if you'd like, one cup of frozen blueberries. So you're going to take fresh blueberries and place them in the freezer for about 40 minutes before making this. One cinnamon stick for garnish and some unsweetened dark chocolate for garnish also that you're going to shave and uh, garnish the drink with. You're going to place in a shaker the espresso, the cinnamon, the honey, and with a small wire whisk, you're going to whisk all those ingredients together. Then you're going to get four ice cream glasses. They should be about three ounces each they should hold. So it's a little less than a half a cup. Divide the whipped cream into those four ice cream glasses. 
filling each glass halfway. Then you're going to place the frozen blueberries in the shaker with the coffee mixture. Cover and shake this about eight times. Pour into the ice cream glasses top with a little bit more whipped cream. Divide the whipped cream evenly between all four glasses. Garnish with a cinnamon stick and shave some of that dark chocolate on top. What a great drink to have anytime really, but it's a really cool drink to have in the summertime. Summertime is almost here. It's kind of unofficially here after Memorial Day and we're all enjoying the outdoors and if you're fortunate enough to have a space you can call your backyard, you want to make it as livable as possible for this all this beautiful weather so you can really enjoy it and enjoy the outdoors. And I, as mentioned, I'm going to share some tips for how to beautify your backyard and really enjoy it. And you can find this information on my blog at marialiberati.com, the blog post titled A Blueberry Cream Frost and a Beautiful Backyard. So here's some tips on having a beautiful backyard. Have you considered remodeling your backyard space lately? It's, it's so wonderful to have a stylish, comfortable, and modern home, but having a beautiful backyard can be the cherry on the top. Creating a beautiful backyard space can provide you with space to gather, a peaceful ambiance, natural beauty and scenery, and the ideal entertaining setting. Check out these few ideas for remodeling your backyard to make it into the perfect hosting space that you've been wanting. Landscape your yard. So landscaping your property's yard should be the first step on your list of things to do. It's important to come up with a specific design or image that you're trying to achieve in your space. What kind of trees, plants, and flowers do you want in your backyard? Do you want a mixture of grass and mulch? Do you want to include concrete or pavers? Maybe you want to incorporate a water feature or a pool. There are so many endless options for creating the best outdoor landscape. You can even hire a professional landscape specialist to help you to design the best landscape features for your space or, you know, do it yourself expanding your garden. So coming up, we have Tony Bracco from Bracco Farms to help us learn a little bit about making our own edible gardens. But when you're planning your landscape, don't forget to reserve enough space for your garden. You will want to expand your garden size so that you can include all the plants that you've dreamed of growing. There are lots of different expanded garden designs that you can incorporate so that you can have the sizable garden that you've always wanted. Your garden can include vegetables, fruits, flowers, and herbs. You can design your garden to have each section divided and organized in a way that makes sense to you. An easy way to organize different plants is by incorporating the garden planning boxes into your landscape. This is a, a neat professional looking way to expand and organize your garden. How about adding some water features? As I previously mentioned, it's important to include any water features that you may want in your landscape design. They do require a bit of extra planning because you want to make sure that they're hooked up securely to your water pipes or sources. And there are many different kinds of water features that you can use in your backyard, such as fountains, ponds, waterfalls, streams. Water features are so beautiful and can really add a soothing natural vibe to your outdoor space. How about adding a patio. A patio is a must-have really for any backyard. If you want to have a space to gather friends and family comfortably, you should definitely add some sort of patio to your outdoor space. There are lots of different styles and materials that you can use to create a patio. A concrete patio is simple and modern and is one of the cheaper patio options. You can try using pavers to create a more European cobblestone feel 
material to your patio. A water-based sealant will protect your paving from UV rays and other damage. Constructing a deck from wood or other similar materials is another great option for adding a patio that you'll love and use for years to come. Research your plants before buying them. Researching your plants before buying them is such a necessary step to filling out your yard. Even with something as simple as flowers, you want to make sure that you choose options that will grow durably where you live. Certain kinds of flowers require lots of sun, so you'll want to make sure that they're placed properly so that they can grow. In addition, having fruit trees can bring such a wonderful look to your backyard. They provide lots of shade, beautiful spring blossoms, and delicious fruit. However, it's important to research what types of fruit grow well in your area because certain fruit trees need a certain amount of heat or moisture to prosper. How about learning how to work with the existing plants already in your backyard? So if you live in a house that's already surrounded by trees, grass, and plants, you'll want to be careful when renovating your backyard. It can be easy to think, oh yeah, I'll just tear everything out and start over again. While this approach is possible, it does require a lot of time and effort, and sometimes more than it's worth. For example, if there's a large tree in a location that, you know, maybe you don't want it, you may be tempted to to just tear out the tree, but that tree could have roots that have expanded throughout your backyard and tearing it out would be loads of work. In addition, you could have some tree sprouts even after you remove it since it's been growing there for so long. It may be a better solution to work around the tree's location and to incorporate it into your landscape design and probably less costlier if you do that. How about thinking about lighting when planning your outdoor lighting, make sure to think about the lighting your space will require both at nighttime and daytime. During the day, you probably won't need a lot of additional lighting since the sun will be out. However, it's always useful to have a light switch by the back door so you can turn the lights on easily when the sun starts going down. If you plan on spending a lot of time outdoors at night, you might want to consider adding twinkly hanging lights around your deck or in your trees. You can also use spotlights to illuminate your yard if you have people that will be running around and playing on your grass. And lastly, how about some fun additions? Before you finish up your project, make sure that you think about any fun additions that your family might want to create the perfect backyard. For example, you might want to create a little fire pit out of paver stones so that you can enjoy time roasting marshmallows together. If you have little kids that visit often, a a sandbox and a swing set can be really a great way to help them to safely play while they're outside. If you have family members that love playing sports, consider adding a cement pad that could function as a baseball court, a pickleball court, or a tennis court. If you have a lot of tools that you use for gardening or the upkeep of your yard, you also might want to include a gardening shed so that you have a specific place to store all those tools. And if you have a fur baby, a, a special dog in your life, or maybe you and your friends have dogs, you might want to consider adding something fun in your backyard for your dog. It's entertainment for you to watch your dog play. Some agility tools, some agility things like a little tunnel, maybe a sandbox for the dog. Who knows? You know, just some fun things for your dogs as well. If you follow each of these steps, you should end up with your dream backyard. Make sure that you consider each of these ideas and personalize them to match your individual style and taste. Only you know really what you need in your backyard yard, what works for you, what works for other people may not really fit into your lifestyle and what you need. So suit your backyard to match your individual style and taste. Start today to plan your landscape, research your plants, and figure out the materials that you'll need to make your vision come together and have a beautiful backyard. Today,
Today, I have Anthony Brocco from Brocco Farms in Warwick, New York. And, you know, it's Eat Your Vegetables Day on June 17th. And I'm always about promoting eating fresh vegetables and fresh produce. And Anthony has been doing this wonderful presentation at many places on Zoom, but uh, many places have been hosting this on, well, I'm going to let Anthony tell us all about it. Anthony, welcome. Uh, Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> and Anthony, so tell us, um, tell us, I know you were telling me a great story about why you started doing this victory uh, garden type of tour. Well, what, we, what we did was before the, the, the COVID pandemic, we were, we were talking at a lot of libraries and garden clubs about adapting, because what we have is a small farm. We're not a large farm. It's a family farm, 20 acres. Yeah. 25 acres, actually. Uh-huh. And well, we found that before I had the farm, I was an avid gardener. So uh-huh. now that we have the farm, there's a lot of tools that we use at the farm that can be used in a backyard garden. That are not You don't need a tractor. You don't need all these automatic things, but there are a lot of hand tools. And I had this idea that we could share like small farm methods to be used in a backyard garden to make backyard gardening more fun and more farm-like. Uh-huh. But with the advent of the, of the uh, pandemic, yes. we, we were not able to go to libraries and do the live presentation anymore. Uh-huh. So, we, uh, so we were thinking, it was actually one of the librarians who said to us, would you think about doing a Zoom? And I said, okay, I'll try it. But, you know, we do a lot, a lot of tool demonstrations. We'd have a lot of handouts. We'll have uh-huh. to figure out how to handle all this. Yes. And we did about six of them last year. Uh-huh. But then over the winter, I had the idea of saying, you know, instead of doing adapting small farm methods to a backyard garden, why don't we turn it into a victory garden? So a model after the victory gardens of World War One and World yes. War II, because the pandemic is kind of like a war and you're fighting, yes. uh, especially when, when we were talking about food shortages, shortages, delivery problems, safety and all that. Yes. So people were approaching me saying, how do I start my own garden? I want to be able to grow at least some food myself. So I said, you know what? We'll use the old victory garden method. I presented that to the libraries and they and, and garden clubs and they really jumped on it. And as I was telling you, we went from having six talks last year, but pre-pandemic, we would do about 18 to 20 live. Uh-huh. Uh, this year, we ha- we're at 30. Th- actually, we just booked one yesterday. We're at 33. Wow. So we- wow. That's wonderful. I-, I know that's been becoming more popular, you know, gardening at home, which I, right. I mean, I was happy to hear because, you know, people were home a lot more. Right. They were homebound, right? Yes, it's- or home. Or homebound. And it's, you know, a lot better to be out gardening than sitting in watching television. So I I think that's great that you're out there teaching them how to do that. So can you give us some tips for people and uh, some things people can do that want to just do, you know, have a backyard garden? Well, you're yeah, sure there are. There, it depends. Like everybody's garden and everybody's situation is a little bit different. Uh-huh. So yeah, people who have full sun, people have partial shade, people whose gardens are on an incline or they're on it so they they don't have a level yard but there are ways to to uh to get around that uh, so you can if you have you can do terrace gardening for example if you're if your garden is sloped your yard there's a way to do it by terracing so you yes. have little areas if you have a regular level yard you can do an open plan where you just turn some of the soil over and make a garden there uh-huh. or you can frame it in with with wood and make like a raised bed yeah it's a little bit more contained you don't worry about erosion because the, the, the soil is contained in the frame. And as I was mentioning to you before, a very popular method now is pallet gardening, taking old pallets, uh-huh. putting them in your garden and filling them with soil. And yes. in between each of the boards or the slats, people are planting. And it works great because it's not a permanent garden. You can move it around. Right. Uh, the, the, the boards act as weed blocks so the weeds don't come up. Your crops come up, um, and they look they look very appealing because it's old wood, and you can yes. age them by adding some stain or or, or mineral oil to uh, to bring out the grain, and it looks like almost like a piece of furniture. And and, and that's a great way to you know with wood now because I actually had I I went out in my own garden and I have some raised beds. But the price of wood now, oh, oh my gosh, it's horrible. And then you, it's even hard to find sometimes. Right, right. So, you know, doing a pallet garden, I think, makes a great substitute if you yes, don't want to. And as I tell everybody in the talks, pallets, 
you can get them, go to any tile or granite place. They have signs, take them because they want to get rid of it because everything's delivered on these pallets. Oh, yeah. For example, uh, my son, he works at a garden center a few days a week. Uh -huh. And his boss uh, said to him, tell your father if he needs any pallets. We have so many pallets because <laughs> the plants get delivered up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to follow my own advice. And what we started doing at the farm uh -huh. is we don't grow a lot of herbs because herb, a little goes a long way. So yes. we're making a line of, of, of pallets and we're growing the herbs in the pallets. Great. So, That's great. Go, right outside our greenhouse. So yes. when people come to the farm, they see all the nice different, the oregano, the basil, the, 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 the uh, sage, things like that. And the perennials. So they'll come back every year. Uh -huh. and just can. Uh, that's the other thing, too. If you have a pallet garden, you want to grow herbs. Uh -huh. A lot of times in the, in the fall, you just cut them back and then cover them with some straw and it'll protect the, the roots so they come back strong next year. So oh, that's a great that. idea. So in other words, you're saying so with a pallet garden, so let's say the season is done, you're going to just put straw on top yeah, of them. We'll cut, to back, put... we'll cut back all the oregano, let's say, leave it just a little high, right. we'll cut it back. And then cover it with some hay or so you can buy hay bales are only like five dollars a bale right right and a little goes a little, one bale goes a long way yes just cover it with the straw over the winter it'll keep it, the roots from freezing uh -huh. um, and then in the spring you can just take the straw off and then uh the, they'll come back goes sage uh all these all these rosemary they're all perennials most herbs are perennials um <laughs> so they'll come basil isn't it's an annual but they're yes. uh, uh certain ones especially oregano we've been growing oregano in the same area at the farm for 10 years the same plants so wow wow it, it and herbs are, herbs i think are probably a good thing for people that maybe haven't really done gardening to right. start with right right you find yourself a good uh, uh garden center that in your area to go to i always recommend a garden center over a box store because you're going to get superior product in yes. a garden center and you have people who work there that know what they're talking yeah, about yeah. so you and you get a better product. For example, uh, the farm this year, we usually go to another farm to get our plugs of basil, uh, uh -huh. which is like 288 little plugs of, of seedlings in, in yes. a flat. And we transplant uh -huh. them, but they were out of basil. So I went to the garden center where my son works uh -huh. and they had some beautiful basil from South Jersey. Uh -huh. so, but I would never find that anywhere in any yeah. box where it would be terrible. Oh, so yes. We transplanted it and it's fine. So, yes. if you, so that's why I always recommend go to a good garden center for your fertilizer for things of that type you don't want to use any synthetic fertilizers you want all yes. natural everything natural same thing with any insecticides or herbicides that you may need to control but there's always a natural solution you know yes and, uh, to it and that's what i promote in, in in the in the in the talks is to make it as natural as possible for example when people a lot of time people will come to me oh i bought some nice boards to make my raised beds well what did they buy they bought the treated lumber oh treated my gosh. Lumber is full of formaldehyde so, yes yes so, you can't use that so, so I would say, you know what you should do? I have a method. What you do is you buy your regular spruce, fir, or pine boards. Yes. And then we came up with a concoction that we saw on PBS years ago. Yes. It makes natural mineral spirits or, or denatured alcohol yes. with, uh, with boiled linseed oil. Okay. Uh, and then you roll it, put it on with, apply it with a roller, and it soaks into the wood two or three coats, uh -huh. and it'll last as long as the treated lumber, and it's non-toxic. Oh, that's so, great. Yes, uh, that that is one thing. I'm glad you brought that point out. The um, treated lumber, you cannot use that for a no. rape bed, so people don't realize it. And it is cheaper than the cedar, so people might go to that, but it's not not, right. the it's best. not a good way. No. But, if you, but if you get pine, pine is very porous. Uh -huh. so pine lends itself if you're going to do the coating that I said with the with the denatured alcohol right. or, the, or the natural mineral spirits mixed with the linseed oil. It'll yes. soak in. It'll soak into the wood. And you do yes. two or three coats, and it lasts. We've used our, we did that in our, our raised beds in our greenhouse. Yes. And all in in 2010, we're only replacing the boards now, and oh, they've been wow. uh, in in a, in a greenhouse. They're in all kinds of conditions. They're in heat. 
they were uh -huh. cold, they're in constant moisture, and they last up to 12 years. Well, so they've lasted. Well, that's good. That's good to know. I didn't know that because I, the last raised bed, I just got cedar, which just cost a fortune. Oh, cedar is especially that. Oh, gosh. Oh. So yeah. I will, I'm going to try that for my next one. That's a, that's a great idea. Definitely a good idea. So I guess um, the last thing would be, what would be the first types of things you think people that aren't really experienced gardeners should grow? And oh. we had said herbs. Is there anything herbs is one thing. Anything that you can buy that's already started, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's already like, if you can get little, little potted, little sets, you know, where you're yes. to a set so i recommend for people start with tomatoes the, the oh, basics tomatoes yes. eggplant peppers zucchini unless you have a big area zucchini is going to take up a lot of room you don't want to do that yeah unless you really want zucchini you'll maybe get one <laughs> put yeah. it in a four foot area so exactly but what you want to do is you want to uh start, start with those and you, you go to your garden center so you, maybe you get four tomato plants you get four uh -huh. pepper plants a few eggplants then with lettuce you can buy them already started uh -huh. or lettuce is so easy you just drop the seeds in and they come up, it's it's like weeds. They just yes. come up. So lettuce, you get some good satisfaction out of that. Yes. Any type of lettuces, you can buy little um, packages of them. And I also recommend uh, like dealing, there are seed sources that I have. When I do the talk, I have a series of handouts that I do that uh -huh. I show on the on the screen. Yes. With all my recommended seed sources, recommended books to read and all that. I can make that available to your audience. Too. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We can uh, make that available. People mm -hmm. can actually, um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put this on my blog and uh, we'll do a post about this podcast. And if you can send me that information, anybody mm -hmm. listening, we can make that available. Right. Well, yes, definitely. Um, and Anthony, tell us where can we find, like if somebody wants to attend on Zoom, one of these presentations? Um, if you look find? on my website, which is uh, broccofarms.com, uh -huh. we have a farm talks page and we have a listing of all the libraries right. uh, where the talks will be. We have a three-point Part series we're doing with the town of Va uh, Valley Cottage. Uh -huh. uh, they want me to do three talks. One, just uh, take everybody through all the different steps. Wow. So beginning at the end of June, July uh -huh. and August. Uh -huh. uh, we have a few more coming up now, but we're kind of at the tail end of the season, but we're always adding more because the libraries are always calling me. Yes. And the links to, are, are on the library website, so you uh -huh. can sign up. And, uh, we'll be doing one, I think we're doing Nyack tonight. Uh -huh. We're doing the town of Mawa, and uh, I have to look at my schedule. Yes, I, I sure. That's okay. People can, <laughs> people can look it up. And also, I just want to mention Bracco Farms. I'm still intending to get out there one of these days because... That looks like you you have such wonderful, I know you have organic and sustainable produce, mm -hmm. and I've heard a lot. I know the last time you were on my show, you were telling us all about this special soil right. that's there. So, um, you know, people need to take a notice of your farm, too, and the things that you're producing there. That's correct, because we are, like today, what happened was uh, we were, with this, this week, we've been planting all our tomato plants. Uh-huh. Variety, so uh, we waited after the rain to put them in because the soil is nice and moist. And yes, so we've been putting in. We have 15 varieties we're growing this year. Uh -huh. and hybrids to heirlooms, and that's the thing. When you have your garden, you can experiment. No one says you just have to grow Roma tomatoes to make sauce. You can use any tomato to make sauce. You know, yes. mix some heirlooms together. Get some cherry tomatoes. Mix them together. Uh, you can experiment. That's what you want to do. You want to have fun with it. Um, and there's one particular source, and I mentioned this in all my talks. Yes. There's an organization called Seed Savers Organization. They're out in uh -huh. the Midwest, yes. and I make that available with my handouts. Uh -huh. They are an organization that saves seed, or they get heritage and heirloom seeds that they can trace the lineage back hundreds of years oh so if you God. want a particular let's say maria you want to grow a particular tomato like they'll tell you well this tomato started in italy in the 1600s it was brought to the united states oh in my gosh. 
and the seeds are still they're still breeding it, so the seeds are available today. Yes, yes, and, and, that, and that's, that's so interesting. Yeah, that's and interesting because but nobody yes. knows about it. No, and people, you know, most people think, okay, a tomato is just a tomato, like what they see at their grocery store. They don't realize there were zillions of types of tomatoes. The that's grocery right. stores only sell one or two types, maybe, because they don't want to be bothered with all these different varieties. But you doing the garden yourself, you'll have a chance to yeah. actually, right, try some of these uh, varieties if you get to that seed savers. Oh, that's great. Thanks so much for all the info. Mm -hmm. And thanks so much for being here. Well, I know you're really so busy much. too. And uh, hopefully people, will, somebody will also, some of my listeners will also attend some of your presentations and I'll have this information available on my website and that's broccofarms.com, right? That's correct. Yes, they can find you there. Thanks. Thanks again, Anthony. Okay, we'll be talking you. to you soon. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank take you. care. Bye bye. Me too. bye, -bye. Thanks for listening to the Maria Liberati Show, where food meets art, travel, and life. This is Maria Liberati. Want to give a special thanks to my producer, Britton Roselle, and my production intern, Alexandra Troy. And just a reminder to like and share this week's episode for a chance to win a copy of my book, The Basic Art of Pizza, and also chance to win a pizza from Lou Malnati's deep dish Chicago style pizza. You're going to get a free, oh, it's so delicious, pizza delivered to you. It comes frozen, you know, because it's coming all the way from Chicago. Like and share the episode with someone that you think might enjoy this week's episode, but we're doing this all month. So you have till the end of the month to like and share all of our episodes for the month of June. You know, Father's Day is coming up and the Basic Art of Pizza makes a great gift for Father's Day, as well as the Lou Malnati's Chicago deep dish style pizza. And you can find those pizzas online. If you'd like, they ship those all over. So you can also order one or take your chance and see if you get a win a pizza or a copy of the book, The Basic Art of Pizza. And as mentioned, you can find The Basic Art of Pizza and all the books in the book series, The Basic Art of Italian Cooking. That's the Gourmand World award-winning book series on marialiberati.com, my website, or the publisher's website, Art of Living, Prima Media, Dot com or really anywhere books are sold online. They're sold on Kindle, on Amazon.com and anywhere books are sold. And you can find me at, let's say on Twitter, at Maria Liberati, and that's with a capital M for Maria. On Facebook, at Chef Maria Liberati. On Instagram, at Maria Liberati. On LinkedIn, at M Liberati. And my Roku channel, the Basic Art of Italian Cooking by Maria Liberati. And if you get to try my blueberry cream frost recipe that I gave this week, please take a picture if you try that recipe, share it, hashtag it, the Maria Liberati Show, share it on social media. And again, you'll be entered in a giveaway for my book, The Basic Art of Pizza, or that great, delicious Lou Malnati's Deep Dish Chicago Pizza. Or if you use any of our tips to have a beautiful backyard, something special in your backyard, take a picture, share it on social media, hashtag at the Maria Liberati Show. And again, you'll be entered in a giveaway and we're going to start sharing all these pictures on my website and on social media. So please, you know, hashtag your picture pictures the Maria Liberati show and we'll be sharing all these pictures with everyone all my listeners all around the world until next week peace love and pasta thanks for listening <music>